So my dream collage is complete. Let's take a look. Welcome back friends. So last week I showed you me painting a background. I used stencils, I dripped some, you know, used some water to drip the paint. I layered and I did like an abstract thing, it's totally outside of my comfort zone, if to be honest. Um, but anyway, I was happy with the end result, especially since three quarters of it was getting covered up by the, by the body. And today I'm going to show you how, you know, what my whole vision was and um, including, there's even a word in it called dream. Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to start by gluing down this part. So this part I did on the uh, computer and it's done in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, her dress, you know, part and her hair are, are going to be, well, the dress is going to be collage, her hair is going to be painted. So, um, and obviously you could see, I am going to start with a nice fresh blade because this has to be precise cutting. And so I'm just going to cut out, cut her out completely and then decide where she's going to be positioned on the uh, wood panel. And then I'm probably going to have to sketch out where her dress is and where the hair is so that I, I know what I'm doing going forward because that's going to have to get cut away. I'm sorry, my, you know, I have to pull my camera so far up to get the entire thing into the frame and then I have to lean in close so that I can get precise cutting and um, so my head gets in the way. Sorry about that. Okay, so now that she's cut out, I'm going to position her and tape her in place. I want her arm to be flush up against the side. My printer is only a 13 by 19 printer and this board is I think 16 by 20. So that's why some of it I have to sort of just freehand. But I knew the important part, which is the mosaic part, I was going to have. So I'm using some green painter's tape. This is frog tape. I'm trying to be really gentle with that area because I don't want it to pull any of the ink off the paper. I'm hoping that it's going to be okay. And I'm using black transfer paper. You might have seen me use this in past videos. I use it to trace. So it's like a carbon paper that we sometimes used as children when we were in school. Anyway, we're going to trace her dress. That way, that way this image is transferred to the board. And I want to get this nice curved edge here because that's very important to the realism of this piece. And I'm even doing some of like the highlight areas, although I'm not going to stay true to that. And a lot of her hair is going to have to be freeform with the brush because I just want to get the position of her head right. And then the hair, um, I'm just going to, with the brush, freeform it. 
I'm going to start gluing her down. I'm going to be careful to keep the gel medium mostly in the areas where her body is. And then I have to quickly cut away while it's still wet, cut away the dress and the hair. very frustrated that my hair, head is in the way. I'm so sorry about that. So I wasn't really sure how I was going to get just her body in the right position and glued down properly. Um, but this is so far working out my little my little technique of making sure that part of, of her the left side of her body is tacked down again sorry for the head um, and then I'm slowly adding a little bit more gel medium and pushing with my catalyst wedge and getting most of it down I'm doing it a little bit at a time making sure that it's completely flat and then cutting around the hair. So now all I have left is the arm and my head again. Sorry. I have got to find another system for larger work, obviously. I think I need to be on an easel or something. So now I'm going over the paper. I didn't mention this, but this is printed on paper and was sealed with a, a matte fixative. And so now I'm going over the whole thing with the gel medium. I always add a coat to the top to seal it, smoothing it all out with my catalyst wedge. Okay, I'm going to keep going, but somebody's drilling in the building, so I'm sorry if you hear a little bit of that. I, I think it might be just faint, so let's just keep going. Anyway, I'm, I'm just using carbon black and a big brush, and I'm just free-forming the hair, and I'm going to need a couple of coats. When you're working on a wood panel, you're going to get a lot of brush strokes. So to get that nice solid black that I want, um, I'm going to need to do multiple coats, obviously. But I want some of the blue to show through, like, like her hair is very wispy. And I, I do want some dry brushing. Okay, so once it's dried, I start on my second coat. I'm trying to go over the same areas and still keep that fine wispiness on the far right. But where I want it to be more solid, I'm going over it. It might take a little bit more than I expected. So I'm just trying to give some definition in the hair with a little bit of white and gray and I'm adding some glazing liquid to help me blend a little bit better.
So I went a little bit too white in that one area, so I'm going back over with a glaze of black. I'm just adding a touch more white again, or gray. So I'm just adding some highlights here and there. I'm using the dry brush to blend so I'm going to leave that to dry and now this area I had traced over with some uh, tracing paper and now here are the three pages that I'm going to use to create the collage of her dress and so I'm going to start with probably the dark one and trace the shape as close as I can. So I'm going to tape everything down. to find an area that I want in that shape. I want it to be mostly the dark blue, especially in the armpit area. I'm going to use some gel medium right on the board. And of course, I'm always covering with gel medium on top and making sure the edges are secured and smoothing with my catalyst. So I think this is going to be really nice. Now I have to see the other colors, how they how they fit in as a, I don't know if I want to cut it out like a puzzle or do I want to do more overlaying. So I think I originally planned to cut it out like a puzzle, but then I changed my mind.
So giving it a torn edge. So the lighter paper is going on the right hand side because that's where the light is. And the darker one is on the left. And then I'm going to use that medium shade sort of in the middle. Oh, and there goes my head again. So on this one, I'm just going to tear. And I'm going to use those torn edges in various spots just to give the dress a little bit more dimension and interest. So the lighter paper had too many light areas. I love that paper, but maybe it just needs a little bit, a little bit more dimension. So there's areas of this mid-tone paper that I'm, I'm going to use to, um, I guess, embellish it a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know what word to use, but the certain parts of the rubber band uh, images that I'm going to use. So I'm trying to use little strips, just in areas, so you see the lighter paper peeking through. And it's using exactly the same green, so it doesn't really even look like a different paper. Sometimes you get lucky and it's already torn in exactly the kind of piece that you need. I think when you're in the flow, that happens. Sometimes you just, you just find the right piece for the right spot. Getting into the flow is the secret, but Sometimes that's just not possible. There are some days where you just can't get there. But this was a good day. Okay, so that's that little circle. And I just love the way that looked right by her elbow. One of those tight little circles from the rubber band. And then I decide that maybe I should put a couple of the little lighter green pieces over the blue, acting as a little highlight. Just a couple of more pieces, and that should do it. So I tore just a part of the really dark blue. That did it. Okay, so then I decided the hair 
it was kind of boring and I wanted to do something interesting. So I took these papers from a previous, um, I, I used them on the edge of my other painting. So I decided to just tear them and add them to the hair. So the edges that look white, um, they, they aren't really, it's more the, the medium that's catching the light. It all blends better when it's dry. So I also like the variation in the colors on these. And I tried to find the ones that had the most solid black background. So I really think that this added some fun to the whole thing. I'm trying to get some curves in there so you kind of follows along with the hair. Hopefully it was successful. But I definitely love the way it came out. And if you tear the paper a certain way, you don't get that white edge. You have to sort of tear away. It's a hard thing to explain, so try it for yourself. As you pull, if you hold it with your left hand and you pull away with your right towards the back, the edge, the white edge is on the right hand side and the left hand will have the, um, you know, the color. It's, it's hard to explain. Let's see. Now this was the opposite. I had the right hand, I was pulling away with the, with the, the left hand. And sometimes I left it even if it was white, a white edge, I should say. So I didn't realize how much time I spent on the hair. Took a, took a long time because I had to find the, the right shapes. I didn't want to lose the flow of the hair. So anyway, I just want to explain. I'm going to add the word dream to the, the lower right hand corner below her hair. And I'm going to use my Cricut, but I, I didn't show it on the video. And that's because this is not a Cricut video. <laughs> so those of you that have a Cricut may understand how it can be a real time saver. In this case, this was a very textured board and it turned out to not be a good thing. Even though I sealed the edges of the Cricut template that I was using, the, the stencil I was using, I used a removable vinyl. Um, a lot of the paint sort of either went underneath those little openings um, or just got sort of peeled away. So I had to do, because I had to do three coats of paint as well, so now I had this real sort of um, plastic that wanted to just peel away. So I ended up having to do a lot of hand brushing um, to you know, finish off the word. And it, it literally took me another half hour, so I didn't, and really boring, so I didn't include that. But, um, Love the way it came out, though, in the end. And and I always used to, before I had the Cricut, I always did it by hand anyway. So here we go. And she is done.
All right, so I'm really happy with this. Um, I love what I did with her hair. That was completely like not planned. But while I was working on the hair, I was like, it needs something, something, something needs to happen here um, in a very mixed media sort of way. And so I'm real, real pleased with that part and um, love how this little pop of color is working really well. So now what the next step is, it's off to the photographer to get a proper photograph and then I will put a finish on it. This one is going to get art resin. I have decided definitely art resin. So, you know, a lot of times when we're working on these mixed media projects, we really don't, we think we have a plan and then the plan, you know, goes another way. And that's what happened here, at least with the hair, even, even her dress, the way I collaged her dress was not exactly how I was originally intending it to be. And then I decided to, I still use the three, the three papers, but I overlaid them a little bit more. So don't beat yourself up if you don't stick with your plan. Just, you know, go with the flow. Once you're in the flow, go with it. Anyway, don't forget to create, inspire, and share. And I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.